In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create a custom virtual machine. Okay, so we want to create a new virtual machine. We can use the file dropdown, new virtual machine, or control N. Or we can simply, if we're looking at the home tab, click on the tile for create a new virtual machine. Now, by default, the typical option is going to be selected, but we want to customize our installation. So I'll check custom and then click next. Now, at this point, we have the option of choosing the compatibility. And as you can see, we can go all the way back to workstation 5.x uh, for this installation. And that's useful if you want to create a virtual machine that's going to be running on different instances of VMware or other VM uh, where products like Fusion or uh, ESX or so on. So you see as I choose different versions that the compatibility becomes greater on the left hand side and we do have to deal with the limitations. So you have to pay attention to that as well. Uh, for instance, uh, your maximum memory for uh, workstation 6.5 to 7x is 32 gigabytes. If I go back to VMware 11, we've got 64 maximum uh, gigabytes of memory to access. So there's a trade-off depending on what type of compatibility you want to use. Now, let's just say that I want to go back to workstation 9 because I have workstation 9 running on one of my servers. And that gives me access to 9, 10, 11, Fusion 5, 6, and 7, and ESX 5.1. And here are the limitations. So uh, I'm happy with the trade-offs. I'll go ahead and uh, click Next. And at this point, we have to choose our installer. Now, if we have an installer disk, a physical disk in our uh, BD-ROM drive, we can use that. Or if we have a disk image, we can use that. And here I have Ubuntu 14.10. I'll go ahead and browse, make sure that's selected. It's an ISO, so it's a disk image, and click Next. Now at this point, I can customize it, so I'll just go ahead and enter my information. And this will take care of doing this uh, during the installation rather than us having to enter it manually. Click Next. Give it a name. Okay, so in this case, there's already an existing uh, uh, virtual machine called Ubuntu 64-bit. So VMware has automatically added that two in parentheses afterwards just to make sure that we have a separate and unique folder. We can change the location if we want to. Uh, we can change the name of the folder if we want to. Uh, and, uh, you know, for most purposes, you want to leave it in that default folder um, and make sure that you have plenty of hard drive space available. Go ahead and click Next. Now at this point we're going to be asked about the processor configuration. We have the number of virtual processors and the number of cores per processor. So for instance, if I had one processor and two cores, then VMware would provide two virtual processor cores to the virtual machine. If I chose two processors and two cores, you would see that we have a four there, so four total processor cores. So it's a multiplier, and you can go up to eight and eight in both cases. Now, the thing is that typically one and one will be fine, okay? If you're doing any type of sort of standard software um, uh, installation and running on your virtual machine, typically like word processing or even image editing, you're not going to have to worry too much about this. Some operating systems do require more cores uh, or more processors, so you have to uh, assign those based on the actual uh, operating system that you're installing. But one and one is fine. I'll go ahead and click Next. And then Memory. Now, it gives us some options here. We have a slider here where we can actually slide up and down as much as 64 gigabytes if we have that much memory on our system. And here it shows us uh, some maximums. So for instance, there's the maximum, 32. That's how much RAM I have in installed on this system. We have the maximum recommended uh, memory. So that's the maximum recommended memory for this uh, particular system. We have recommended memory, which is the default, 1024. And then we can click on that yellow arrow and bring it down to 512. And that's the recommended minimum. So you can really... Uh, put it wherever you want. Now for something like Ubuntu, you don't need a lot of memory. So probably 2048 will be fine, two gigabytes, where 1024 megabytes or one gigabyte was the recommended. So we've doubled that. Click Next. Now at this point, we choose our networking options. We have bridged networking, which provides the operating system 
with direct access to the uh, Ethernet network, and it gives the guest its own IP address on that external network. Network address translation provides the guest operating system access to the host computer's uh, network connection using the host's IP address, and that's normally the recommended or, or default setting. We have host only, where we connect the guest to a private virtual network on the host computer or do not use a network connection. Now, normally I would stick with uh, network address translation, but it really depends on the type of uh, network relationship you want the guest to have with the host and with the network and the LAN and the internet. NetNAT is normally fine because that'll use the host's IP address and go through that. In this particular instance, I'm going to choose do not use a network connection. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want Ubuntu to be looking uh, for updates during the installation. It would make the installation take longer, and we don't want to do that. But keep in mind that once the uh, guest OS is installed, you can activate that network connection anytime you want. So once we're finished, I'll go ahead and turn that back on. So I'll use Do Not Use a Network Connection. Click Next. Now here we have SCSI controller types, and the recommended is LSI Logic, but if you need to change that for whatever reason, uh, you can go ahead and use uh, SAS for L LSI Logic, or Bus Logic if you're using a 32-bit guest. As you can see, it's not available for 64-bit guests. Click Next. What type of disk do we want to create? Well, we have IDE, SCSI, and SATA, which is not supported on Workstation 9.0 VM, so that's a trade-off by making this compatible with Workstation 9.0. Uh, SCSI is the recommended, and normally that's the one you want to go with. Remember, we're setting up a virtual disk here. I'll go ahead and click Next. Now, at this point, we have the option to create our disk. We have Create New Virtual Disk. Use an existing one if we have one, which is great. If we have an existing virtual disk, perfect. We can go ahead and select that or use a physical disk. Now, we would have to go ahead and choose the settings for that. If we had a physical disk attached to our host computer that was dedicated for uh, virtual machines, we could go ahead and use that. But I'll go ahead and choose Create a New Virtual Disk. 